After My Name is Earl was cancelled, the creative mastermind behind the series turned around and created Raising Hope, and it was quite possibly one of the best American sitcoms of its time. But the show was completely mishandled by its network, and much like Earl, the series was cancelled after only four seasons. In today's video, we'll be discussing the events that led to the creation of Raising Hope, everything that made this series so great, and the show's upcoming spiritual successor. Let's get into it. The creator of both My Name is Earl and Raising Hope, Greg Garcia, started out as a writer for the ABC shows On Our Own and Family Matters, and soon after co-created the ironically titled very short-lived NBC sitcom called Built to Last. But Greg's first successful television venture as a creator would arrive in the year 2000, when he co-created the CBS sitcom Yes Dear. Critics seemed to despise this show from the very beginning, but it had a lot of fans, and experienced a relatively solid six-season run. I say relatively solid because CBS almost cancelled the show after its fourth season, but some financial negotiations saved the show from being canned by the network. But around that same time, Greg Garcia saw that the writing was on the wall for Yes Dear and began working on his next project, the pilot episode for a series called My Name is Earl. Tuesdays, one man will turn his life around. That's your ex-wife? One mistake at a time. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't gonna miss her. <laughs> My Name is Earl, Tuesday, September 20th at 9, 8 central on NBC. My Name is Earl revolved around a small-time thief named Earl Hickey, played by Jason Lee, who in the first episode loses his $100,000 winning scratch ticket after getting hit by a car. Soon after, Earl discovers the concept of karma and blames his recent misfortune on all the negative actions in his life. Earl proceeds to record everything bad he's ever done to a list with the intention of righting all of his wrongs. And being totally honest, Yes Dear was never my thing, solely because, well, I was a kid, and that show looked like something that my dad would have watched. In fact, I think he might have actually watched it. But Earl, on the other hand, this show was my shit. This was one of the most clever sitcoms of its day. Earl alone was a great character, but there was also Joy, Randy, Catalina, Crabman. The dynamic between these characters was just so damn good. But unfortunately, a decline in viewership numbers was the deciding factor for NBC when they canceled My Name is Earl after only four seasons. The announcement was made on May 19th, 2009, just five days after the final episode of season four had aired. As a fan of the show, I'm still upset that My Name is Earl never received a proper ending, because it turns out that before filming the final episode of the season, Greg Garcia had asked the network if it was okay to finish out the fourth season with a cliffhanger, and they gave him the green light to do so. NBC really was on a roll when it came to bullshit decisions during this era, right? I mean, they pulled the plug on one of their best original comedies and proceeded to screw over Conan O'Brien during his Tonight Show run. That, my friends, is why I will never pay for a subscription on the Peacock app. But just like that, after four seasons and multiple awards, including five Emmy wins, My Name is Earl was dead in the water. But don't worry, the cast of Earl will be making a return a little bit later in the video. In November of 2009, just a few months after My Name is Earl was cancelled, it was announced that Greg Garcia was working on a new series titled Raising Hope. Sorry, Keep Hope Alive for the Fox Network. The pilot episode was set to be filmed in December of that year, and the elevator pitch for Keep Hope Alive goes like this. In the fictional town of Natesville, 22-year-old Jimmy Chance has a one-night stand with a girl named Lucy, who unbeknownst to him is a wanted serial killer. After being sent to prison, Lucy reveals that she's pregnant as a result of said one-night stand, and Jimmy is left to raise a baby girl named Hope after her mother is sent to the electric chair for her crimes. And I don't know about you, but the synopsis of this show grabbed my attention immediately. But of course, no matter how intriguing the plot of a show may sound, a TV series is nothing without the actors who portray its characters. And when casting was being done for the main character of the show, Jimmy, literally hundreds of actors submitted audition tapes for this role. Out of those hundreds of actors, Lucas Neff was Greg Garcia's first choice for the role. This dude has a crazy origin story, because it turns out that Lucas didn't even mean to pursue an acting career. When applying to college, his application was misprocessed, and he was accidentally enrolled in theater arts, but he ended up loving it so much that he stuck with it. When auditioning for the show in 2009, Lucas was heavily involved in Chicago theater productions, but only had one television credit on his resume. At that time, Lucas was getting paid about $500 every three months for a play he was doing, and it reached the point where he had less than $5 to his name. So Lucas cleaned a house for some extra money and was willing to make it a full-time venture, but less than a week later, he received a call back about his audition tape for Keep Hope Alive. Lucas was then flown out to do an in-person screen test where he landed the role of Jimmy Chance. 
How wild is it that one day this dude was down on his hands and knees scrubbing someone's toilet, and a little under two years later, he's presenting at the Teen Choice Awards alongside internet sensation Rebecca Black. We live in a crazy world, man. In the pilot episode of the show, we're introduced to, of course, Jimmy, along with his parents, Bert and Virginia Chance, played by Garrett Dillahunt and Martha Plimpton, along with Cloris Leachman as Jimmy's great-grandmother, Barbara June, but the family refers to her as Mama. And finally, Sabrina Collins, played by Alicia Ruland. Uh? Wait, 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 hold up, sorry. When I said the pilot episode, I was actually referring to the unaired pilot for Keep Hope Alive. This was super trippy to watch because obviously several changes were made to the show before its television premiere. The title of the show was changed from Keep Hope Alive to Raising Hope, which is a much better name. If you've watched this series, you know that the Sabrina character was played by Shannon Woodward. She's Jimmy's love interest throughout the show, who also works alongside him at the grocery store called Howdy's. In the unaired pilot, not only is Sabrina played by a completely different actress, but instead of working as a cashier at a grocery store, she's a server at a restaurant. No disrespect to Alicia Rulin, but I definitely understand why they decided to recast this character. The Sabrina we see on Raising Hope compliments Jimmy in such a great way. She's smart, sarcastic, and completely self-aware. Whereas Jimmy has basically none of those qualities. In this version of Sabrina from the unaired pilot, well, sort of just seems like she wants to have Jimmy committed to an asylum. She gives him this very concerned look the entire time, and I don't know man, the chemistry just didn't really seem to be there. And because the Sabrina character was changed from restaurant server to grocery store cashier, Greg Binkley was added to the main cast as the manager of Howdy's. And another character that got recast was Jimmy's cousin, who in the unaired pilot is played by Kate Micucci. Well, tell us about this show. What's it called? It's mm -hmm. called Playing with Micucci. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's my name, Micucci. In the main series, Jimmy's cousin is named Mike and is played by Skylar Stone. Kate instead plays Sabrina's cousin, Shelly, the character that had a dead tooth for part of the first season. So, what's the deal with the rotten chomper, sweetheart? Well, funny you should ask. I keep it as a conversation starter. But I've gone on long enough about the pilot episode. The reason that I wanted to make a video about Raising Hope to begin with was, I'm not saying it's a hidden gem or anything. I mean, the show aired on Fox, and even to this day is featured prominently on Hulu. But Raising Hope is a fantastic show that seemingly isn't really talked about in modern times. And for me personally, it's one of the best comfort shows I've discovered in a really long time. I've always been a fan of character-driven stories, and there are so many great characters on Raising Hope that if I gave a detailed description of every one of them, this video would have a runtime of like five hours. But the Chance family in particular has to be one of the most strangely lovable families in TV history. Bert and Virginia became parents to Jimmy when they were 15 and are pretty much mentally stuck at that age. If it isn't the foul-mouthed pregnant girl and the boy who thought it was hilarious to draw genitalia in my textbooks. We've changed a lot since then. How you doing? They never graduated high school, and even though they carry jobs as a landscaper and a house cleaner, they're extremely poor, but mostly because they only work part-time. Despite all of that, Bert and Virginia are a great example of a solid TV couple. I specifically like that Bert wasn't written as the usual, stereotypical sitcom dad. A lot of shows portray the father figure as a one-dimensional moron who despises their wife, but Bert Chance is the exact opposite of that. I mean, he's not really the sharpest crayon in the box, but he means well. And even though Garrett is mostly known for appearing in movies and TV shows that fall under the action, thriller, drama categories, he was so good at raising hope as a comedic actor that I'll never be able to unsee him as Burt Chance. But of course, the Chance family's living situation is a bit unconventional. Like I said, they only work part-time, so the family lives in their great-grandmother's house rent-free, and she herself suffers from dementia, occasionally becoming lucid for a short period of time. Cloris Leachman absolutely killed it as Mama. I know that Betty White was considered America's grandma and we held her on a really high pedestal, for good reason, obviously. But Cloris Leachman deserves just as much love. She was a damn legend who managed to upstage anyone she shared a scene with on this show. The inclusion of her character alone would have made for an interesting family dynamic, but throw a newborn baby into the mix and things only become more entertaining. Your baby's trapped in your mother's clutter. What? She doesn't even know she's trapped. Don't worry, your father's gonna suck her out. She's in good hands. Remember how delicately I vacuumed out that dead squirrel from the bottom of the Wasserman's pool last week? Not a bruise on it. Little fella could have had an open casket. 
I'll be honest though, the use of a baby as a plot device actually kind of scared me away from watching this show for a long time, but even when the Hope character is the main focus of an episode, the show never leans too heavily into the cute factor, and the writing never feels cheap. As the series goes on, both the main and supporting characters become more fleshed out, and that's where Raising Hope really shines. This is one of those shows with so many great characters that I honestly can't pick a favorite. Actually, that's a lie. It's Frank. Frank works alongside Jimmy and Sabrina at Howdy's, and if you've ever worked in retail or the food service industry, you've probably met a guy exactly like Frank. He's a self-declared master in the art of sausage nunchucks. His house contains a miniaturized version of Natesville that he built from scratch, and he is always down to party. Jimmy! You ready to blow something up? All right, watch the master. Do you blow them up until they explode? No, dude, just till you get dizzy. But as much as I love Frank, at the end of the day, I have to accept that I am way more like Jimmy. Like, right down to the fact that when I was his age at the start of the show, I looked like I could have been cast as his goofy cousin. But I have no doubt in my mind that if I became a father at the age of 22, I would have been just as clueless as he was at the start of the show. Only vegetable jars I've found have pictures of either black babies or Asian babies on them. And I don't know if the pictures are random, you know, or if there's a reason Asian babies instead of white ones should eat these particular string beans. That is a really good question. There are many great scenes involving Jimmy, but one of my favorites is from season three, episode 11, where he's trying to buy a car and he's sitting in a car dealership, decked out with brand gear, convinced that he's about to drive home with a brand new Dodge. That is, until he finds out that he has a credit score of 91. Well, that's an A, right? It's out of 850. This scene in particular just summarizes the character in such a great way. He's a bit slow, but he's just such a good-hearted dude that you can't help but grow attached to his character. We then come to find out that his parents ruined his credit score by financing a hot tub under his name when he was a child. How can we afford a hot tub and I can't get new shoes? Because your feet are going to keep growing, buddy. And that moment perfectly summarizes their characters. And I would be committing a sin if I didn't bring up Jimmy's high school goth phase, where he insisted on being referred to as Drakkar Noir. The season one finale centers around this phase of his life, and it's easily one of the best episodes in the entire run of the show. But as much as I could go on and on about how great and underrated Raising Hope was, things did take a turn towards the end of the show. Raising Hope was eventually treated like a third wheel in the Fox lineup. At the start of its first season in 2010, Raising Hope aired on Tuesday nights directly after the musical comedy Glee. And uh, I'm not sure if you remember just how popular that show was, but because Raising Hope had Glee as a lead-in, the pilot episode received about 7.5 million viewers. But starting with season 2, Raising Hope no longer aired directly after Glee. Fox instead decided to give that spot to New Girl, which of course went on to be an extremely successful series for the network. But Raising Hope was shuffled around on the schedule a bunch of times, and by the fourth and final season of the show, it was sentenced to the dreaded Friday night death slot. And it turns out that right around the third season of the show, there was a bit of turbulence between series creator Greg Garcia and the Fox Network. Greg made his exit as showrunner for Raising Hope ahead of the season three finale. Before Greg stepped away as showrunner, he managed to reunite the cast of My Name is Earl within an episode of Raising Hope in the season three episode titled Making the Band. And as a longtime fan of Earl, this episode was so awesome. Brother, at this rate, you're never going to finish crossing off that list. And we're not the only ones who are going to be disappointed. A lot of people will be disappointed. You know, I've never really been a big believer in karma. Maybe that's why my life's been such a mess. Oh my God! Wow! A few of the main and supporting cast members from Earl had previously appeared on Raising Hope throughout its run, including a few characters that were pulled directly from the Earl universe, but this was the first time that a majority of the cast had been gathered together all at once. In Raising Hope, Jason Lee plays a washed up rock star character named Smokey Floyd, who only had one hit song during his heyday in the 80s, but generally goes around acting like his sh** doesn't stink. And Jason must have had so much fun as this character, and I'm guessing that the hair and makeup department on the show did too because he looks f***ing insane. There are several nods and references to My Name is Earl throughout the series, but during the final moments of the Making the Band episode, Smokey pulls out a list of wrongdoings out of his pocket, and there's no mistaking that this is Earl's list. And although Raising Hope didn't receive as long of a run as it deserved, 
The cast and crew sort of saw that the writing was on the wall, and prior to the show's cancellation, planned that the final episode of the fourth season would also act as a series finale. Most of the cast on Raising Hope reunited for a Zoom charity event in 2021, and everybody seems to be willing to do another season. It obviously wouldn't be the same without Cloris Leachman, who passed away literally less than two months prior to the Zoom reunion, but I would love to catch up with these characters in modern times. And if you were a fan of Raising Hope, there's an upcoming series created by Greg Garcia called Sprung, coming to Amazon's Freevee app, which will reunite Martha Plimpton and Garrett Dillahunt in starring roles. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of the other actors from Raising Hope and possibly My Name is Earl made an appearance on the show as well. Sprung revolves around a character named Rooster, played by Garrett Dillahunt, who, after being previously incarcerated, moves in with his former cellmate and is determined to turn his life around at the start of a global pandemic. And I was already interested in this show based on its creative team and cast members, but it's going to be free to watch, so I'll definitely check it out. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I definitely recommend trying out Raising Hope if you were a fan of My Name is Earl. It's a fantastic show and the entire series is available on Hulu. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.